Luke, thanks for jumping on the show, man. We appreciate your time. How you doing? Good, man. How are you? Thank you for having me. Oh, we're good. Um, just for reference for listeners, go ahead and introduce who you are and what you do, because normally we're interviewing bands, so this is a little different. Yeah. So I'm Luke. I run Mad Vintage. Uh, sell on eBay, my own website, Vintage Local Markets, uh, sometimes hardcore shows. only done a couple of those, but mainly just selling vintage ventures is kind of selling what i love were you at this is hardcore i seen something yeah. set up was it this is hardcore okay yeah i wasn't set up at it but i was there yeah okay i seen something you were set up at some festival but maybe i was lost in a year ago's pictures because yeah. i was scrolling yeah. through your profile yeah i'm trying to set up at fya this year i was supposed to set up last year but wanted to see bands instead never got to see tui so i was like i'd rather watch tui than fucking then, sell then t-shirts money. fuck yeah dude that's yeah. hilarious <laughs> pretty much well um, kind of the same for this year but i'm gonna have to get somebody to watch the booth so i can watch foundation but definitely um well like how you and i met i sold you some t-shirts um a few years ago two years ago now maybe yeah and um you've really fucking grown since then so congratulations on that thank it's you awesome yeah ever since i started the website i think it's just been like steady climb so yeah, yeah steady super climb. cool thank you yeah jeremy i remember when he was selling all those t-shirts but i never really thought that we'd be interviewing you because originally when he was like <laughs> telling me i'm like oh he's just selling them to some dude that collects vintage shirts like i didn't know you were this whole like you know, independent business type of thing. Yeah, man, definitely. vintage is yeah blowing. <laughs> so, how long have you been doing this for? When did you start? Uh, selling specifically band shirts, probably about five years now, or vintage band shirts for about five years now. But I was always like thrifting and going to yard sales and flea markets and that crap ever since I was like ten years old, and that just kind of escalated once I actually started. Like, oh, there's actually like a scene behind this and you can make a living off of doing it yeah yeah that's amazing i've run into numerous people that have done it not as many people with band shirts but like i have a mm -hmm. friend here that runs a store and uh called the nostalgia factory he sells all types of different shirts and stuff oh that's actually funny because a buddy of mine in asbury park new jersey has a vintage store called nostalgia factory as well <laughs> yeah, that's funny i'm sure it's like yeah. a sort of semi-common name for a yeah know, probably store, but it is a really cool name nonetheless yeah it's catchy and i've had a few friends like on instagram that have been like major ebay sellers just off thrifting i mean like this guy that mm -hmm. i know he used to work at a bank and he was like i quit my job to do this because he's like i was making way more doing this and i totally. had all the free time in the world exactly work for yourself work your own hours go thrift for five hours list on ebay for an hour and you can sell fucking i know people that sell like pots and pans and they make a full-time living off of it. it's crazy yeah there's money in like literally yes. everything but you just have exactly. to know exactly what in that realm you're looking for like you could yeah. be you in just... like you said pots and pans i know people that exactly. collect cast iron pans like their records basically like it's crazy yeah you just have to be that asshole in the corner just looking up every single thing until you get the knowledge base so yeah. you actually know what you're looking for yeah you're like guarding the thrift store like my precious yeah. over here like yeah pushing there's like off other goodwill, people. there's like goodwill bins by me and there's literally just like 15 year old kids that just like sit there all day and it's just like a, it's kind of ridiculous sometimes because like you're wasting your whole time there. But at the same time, it's better than working a nine to five job at like a coffee shop. So yeah, teach their own, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I appreciate that freedom. Like we do this podcast in the back of my record store, and yeah, that's awesome. Just having that freedom, being able to do what I want to do, like I love that. So mm -hmm. anybody that's willing to pursue that or take on that chance, like I always. You know, big ups to them no matter what they're doing because it's not always easy. Definitely not. I mean, I think I work probably more than an average nine to five, and yeah. I still also go to school, so it's definitely hard to balance it. Yeah, because you never actually really, like, get to clock out. Like, it's an all-the-time thing. You know, you could be, like, exactly. laying in bed on your phone, and then you got sales Answering going Answering messages, yep. trying to buy deals through Instagram DMs. It's nonstop, doesn't stop. So when did you start to re like you got a few t-shirts together or did you sell your own like how did you start 
with the Start whole like, oh man, I'm going to sell, yeah, I'm going to sell band t-shirts and resell them. So I started getting into like, just like average heavy music at the same time as getting into like actual vintage. And then I found like an OG Slayer shirt, not realizing it's like 1988 rain and blood or whatever, however old it was at the time when I found it. And I remember like looking it up to my older brother sold on eBay at that time. I wasn't really into it. Okay. And he's like, Oh shit, that might be worth money. Look it up. And then lo and behold, it's like $150 shirt. I'm just like, that's it. This is what I need to be doing. That's what I'm looking for. I don't want to sell Looney Tunes shirts. I want to sell Slayer shirts. Basically. Yeah, dude. <laughs> so Slayer's the Slayer's the inspiration for your independent. Yeah, no, not, your, it's not necessarily I, Slayer, but yeah, yeah, that's funny, dude. I mean, that's awesome that your older brother was like, "Yo, look that up." Pretty much, yeah. What is you know? Does he still sell shit, or was that kind of no, more of a he hobby doesn't. for he him? Just, he he did it for like a year as like a hobby, and then yeah. I just kind of like took it and ran. That's cool, man. So as far as, like, you said Slayer, I would imagine Metallica was another one because I know people who do collect vintage stuff and Metallica always seems to be, like, the big one that people are looking for. Um, yeah, Metallica is definitely an easy and big seller just because everybody and their mom loves Metallica and, like, they made... I could only imagine how many shirts they made for, like, that Guns N' Roses Metallica co-headline tour that was, like, yep. 91, 92. They had to make, like... 500,000 t-shirts for that tour because that tour went everywhere. And right. Pretty much every tour that they did, they were putting out, like, you know, they had shirts for, like, the L.A. Stadium. They had them for, exactly. like, in Detroit. So there was region-specific ones, too. Mm -hmm. And there's some fanatic out there who's probably trying to hunt them all down. Exactly, yeah. The completionist. It's, like, kind of like a record completionist that needs all the variants for that tour. Yeah. So I did. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to ask, like, as far as your inventory, do you have, like, a building that you keep all your stuff in? Or are you just, like... Yeah, I have a warehouse a here. Yeah, I have a warehouse here in South Carolina where it's so basically, first walk in, it's kind of a store where I take appointments at. I got okay. an office, a shipping area, and then a photo studio where I, in there, in one of the rooms where I take all the photos for the website and eBay. And then the back half is, like, a garage kind of, like, industrial warehouse kind of pretty much where i just keep like racks and racks of stuff right so on your i know that you have like you said and even and when you follow the instagram you can hit the link tree and you can either go to your website or to ebay now let, <laughs> if i'm just like some guy looking for a little say a hate breed t-shirt um mm -hmm. would it be look no further He's right but <laughs> would it be easier to look that up on your website or on the ebay account Definitely the website. That's where you keep like, all your the better stuff is. Yeah. So everything that's on the website is on eBay, but not everything that's on eBay is on the website. Okay. okay. So I also have like Perfect. lower end stuff, like fifteen, twenty dollars stuff on the eBay, just like filler stuff. Because oh yeah, that's mids, another, pay, that was... mids pay the bills when it comes to vintage too. Yeah. That's well, what I was going to bring up. To sell like twenty ten dollar things than it is twenty three hundred dollars. Exactly. T For sure. So just trying to not have all my eggs in one basket and keep a broad section of inventory. Yeah, absolutely. But we, like we said, we were going, like I was going through some shit just browsing. And um, I noticed uh, like even some jerseys that you had for sale that like you can go buy the band's brand new one and it's like 60 bucks. Or you can get like the vintage one from 20 years ago that's honestly better material for a couple exactly. dollars more. You know, so Rare, it's not like you're not as many as out there, and it's definitely. not like you know you got to spend fucking two hundred dollars for a t-shirt to have something cool. You know, I think it's a uh, exactly it's pretty rad, and that it you... also holds its value more too. Oh, than for sure. Stuff. I mean, way more collectible. Obviously, like a Pan of Truth shirt from like you buy for forty bucks or whatever is still cool, but like a Hate Breed shirt from whatever Perseverance area that's like a hundred dollars that's way cooler. So, is there like a threshold for? a release year of the t-shirt for it to be considered vintage like how far back does it have to go typically like vintage is kind of considered 15 to 20 years old okay depends I didn't on the person know if, some, some people say, say 25 years some people say 20 some people say 15 because i know everybody sort of has a different opinion on that like you know some mm -hmm. people could be like i oh, five years ago but to me i'm like man it's gotta i feel like at least 10 at the bare minimum definitely like, yeah i'm i'm dude that rides in the like 
20 years like because that's like a classic so i look at it like if the classic if your car is 20 years you can get a classic plate so i kind of i guess i always equated it to being around 20 years or more that makes sense you know i think cars are a little bit different oh for sure it's just how my but that's just a whole other collectible works, market you know? there. and i think you know um as collectors obviously all three of us are and it doesn't matter if like okay obviously all three of us collect records and have you know collect t-shirts whether it's just to support what our favorite artist or because we have like kick-ass looking apparel yeah shout out to wax Mage. you know for sure in gang time and like it, it but it doesn't matter what it what it is we'd still have like collect the same way whatever it was you know what i mean i feel like because i've always collected dumb shit and it's like you go from dumb to like oh man i'm gonna collect this This stuff's cool and then now you actually have value in what you collect like i I just you know i think that's amazing like i started with baseball cards it's amazing you know like that market was just so flooded and everybody kind of is but it's like they kind of fix themselves now but like i can't sell a don russ box set 1989 for more than like 20 bucks because they printed fucking 10 million of them you know what i'm saying yeah i don't even know who the fuck that is well (laughs) anyway somebody somebody out there might know right somebody out there is like yo i'll give you 10 bucks but like that's what (laughs) i just i think it's awesome though that um you have like gotta have that gotta have that niche you know what i mean so everybody collects their own thing right got their own and do you, you just have any out type how to, like, of uh, make money off it? Any type of particular stuff, music-wise, that you do look for, or do you just kind of go all across the board? Like if it's old, all you'll across get it. the board. Like yeah, if it's old, I'll get it. If there's anything like vintage band-wise that I think I'll make money on that go corresponds with the margins I want to see for it, then I'll definitely buy it. Like I'll sell a fucking I don't even know, like a Jay Giles band shirt. Like, I, it doesn't matter to me just because I don't enjoy it. Somebody else is going to enjoy it. So I try to have, like, something for everybody. Yeah, be popular around here, man. Yeah. I could sell <laughs> I could sell you five of them easy by the end of today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. They are a popular band Yeah, it's here weird still. up here. So as far as, like, looking at the conditions of T-shirts and stuff, because this is the main thing mm-hmm. that bugs me with old clothes is – do you have like where is your cutoff point where you're like okay this is unsellable it's mm. just too messed up honestly i don't really, it depends on what the shirt is like like say like a nirvana shirt if it's beat the shit whatever like i'll still sell that fine but it's like kind of different when it comes to like hardcore stuff like there's a marauder life is pain shirt on depop that mm. if you collect vintage that's like a very high end shirt it's like a 600 hundred dollar shirt right and like buy the seller had it up for 300 but it was like super thrashed out like like complete armpit holes and shoulder so holes nuts. and i was just, i was like damn if it was perfect i'd buy it because then i can i'd probably keep it because i don't have the gray one i have the black one but it, it kind of depends like some some shirts like the thrashing looks good but if it's just like completely like chopped at the neck maybe something like that i wouldn't sell but it kind of depends on what the shirt is like hardcore stuff probably like not to beat the shit but if it's like grungy type of stuff and probably just doesn't really matter yeah because i know there's like we were talking uh, we have a friend who has a nirvana t-shirt that's i don't remember which shirt it was but i'm sure you would know um it goes for like five grand and i was like damn dude i I would sell that like in a heartbeat and he's like no he's like no i'm keeping it like (laughs) screw that because uh, now's probably the time to sell it yeah well i know it's like the huge resurgence of things being you know vintage stuff being that collectible like it's crazy how popular it really is like me definitely so like the shirt you're wearing is that black it was black at one point in time yeah it's, it's black like it just might be my lighting way torn or way faded out so like yeah me, it's faded out more like gray I personally love like crisp black. Like this is a brand new T-shirt. I literally mm. just got this in the mail today. Um, so when I look at a T-shirt that's like that old, I'm like, man, I, I might love the shirt, but like the the discoloration bugs me sometimes. Yeah, I'm the opposite. I love it when a shirt's like nice faded yeah. out, sun faded. That's what I was gonna say. Is like some people they like that color, and I've yeah. even seen some people pay more for that. Exactly, like, if it's a shirt's like super nice fade all around, then. 
I've charge seen an extra 20 some bucks on people it. even yeah, I'm the like too. bands have made shirts that already are that color. Yeah, like there's like the comfort color one that's always like the ash gray kind of. I feel like I see like that a lot. Yeah, which is bizarre to me because I'm like, well, I feel like you should have to earn that. Like wear that t-shirt <laughs> out till it gets exactly. a little dark. Like or you know buy it when it was beat up or whatever the case may be. But because mm-hmm. how is that f- color gonna fade down from there? Then you know what I mean. Shit, probably turn white or something. That's what I'm saying. Like it might be weird. For me, yeah. it's like, um, like I sold you. Uh, an h2o t-shirt and then i actually ended the up the h2o go one yeah and i ended super up super thrash that one in. yeah but i ended up getting a repop of it like from toby okay. not that not that long after and to me i was like like ryan's saying where i got a, i traded a thrash for something like super crispy you know what i mean mm-hmm. just and now you and can wear just, that one more right and that's just kind of like how how my brain works on that where it's like all those fucking t-shirts I couldn't get when I was a kid, man. I can get they're them now, re- you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Them now. I yeah. think I just put that one on the site recently. That was one that I kept that one in like my personal collection oh, for a that's while. What's but up. I finally just let it go. It's um. And you said like you welded and shit in that shirt, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, like, dude, I couldn't pretty, believe like, it. Dude. Yeah, that shirt was destroyed, like holes, <laughs> stains yeah. everywhere. And that's I, uh... actually what made me think of the "Where is your threshold for like the cutoff of <laughs> damage?" Because I was like, "Damn, that shirt did yeah. have some holes and stuff in it." That's what. Yeah, I mean, I know people that just collect thrashed out t-shirts, like that want the holes, that don't want them repaired. That's why some stuff, like, some like certain shirts, I send off to get repaired by the tailor or something. But some of them, I just like don't even bother because i know someone's gonna like it more thrashed shit i never even thought about yeah having that. repairs you can that's a thing like people do that like with, yeah with there's just this one t-shirts. girl who i met on instagram recently i sent her like a 90s porno for pyros a 90s metallica and a 90s naughty by nature and i sent her the blanks Sick. and she just just sewed the sleeves back on and the necks back on for like 20 bucks a piece like nice I never Kinda thought. Crazy. I never Man, thought I gotta about that. I got to check out that Naughty by Nature shirt when we get off of here, just out of curiosity. Yeah, it's a new photo. Dope. It has. It just says like Naughty by Nature in white. It has like that with OPP on the back. Oh, that's sick, dude. What are some of the like holy grail T-shirts that you're currently searching out? Whether it's for your store or for yourself. What for the me, store? I want to know what you want. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, I would love like a leeway Desperate Measures long sleeve. Like or, an like, OG any, one. Like, yeah, oh, the OG damn. leeway stuff is so hard to find. It was so hard to find before Eddie passed, and now that he passed, it's like nobody wants to sell his I stuff. I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah. Right. or they want an arm at, and a leg for it. Yeah, there's a store I was at in LA that wanted like twelve hundred dollars for one of the little desperate measure, desperate measure long sleeves. I'm like, damn. Dude, Eddie was that cool like four hundred dollars. Yeah. No, I mean leeway stuff is like was already ridiculously yeah. expensive before he passed. I, I paid like. 400 for my desperate measure short sleeve and that was like a month before he passed so that's probably like doubled in value now which is ridiculous but just kind of how collectability works people yeah. want something when someone passes as Rec- stupid as that is records do the same exact thing shout out yeah, to sullivan once... cap i got a leeway hat from them um, oh yeah but it wasn't, it wasn't for. overpriced which mm-hmm. i wear all the time but not today probably like a marauder uh uh, I'm trying to think. Any cold as life stuff is hard to find. I haven't found like any really good cold as life shirts. Like old shit. Yeah, like any of their old shit. Uh, I have some that are like fifteen years old, but they're not. Even those they're are not still like, pretty decent. They're not old, old. Yeah, they're ninety shit. Is so hard to find. Yeah, these were like uh, repopped ones for. that Cold Cuts did like years ago. And I just, yeah. they, I bought the whole run. So I have like a lot of them. I have like the t-shirt version, the long sleeve and the hoodie version of, but like the same print, oh, yeah. same thing, same shirt. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they're really worth anything though. I had beast from hate Inc. Trying to buy some of them at me off me at one point. And I was Shout like, out to I'm beast. like, dude, I don't want to get rid of them. Like I would love to hook you up, but shit, if you wear them, don't sell them. Like that. Yeah, that's I wear them saying. all the time, so that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like, I don't want to have to go rebuy those. And a lot of the times now that I've noticed when they repop them, they put like some record label on them. Like, we love Dom from A389, but like they s- plastered the whole logo down the long sleeve and stuff. And I, d- I don't know. I just like the way the old ones look. Like, the old ones said Detroit down the sleeve and stuff like that. 
Are you both from Detroit or? Uh, we're from Michigan. Michigan. You're from Michigan too. Yeah, yeah. Alpena. Yeah, Same we're spot. Northeast oh, yeah. Michigan. We're sitting across from each other right now. You can't. Really oh, really? I, I was gonna ask if you guys are in the same room. Like, <laughs> yeah, you can't even tell with the W audio. That's sick. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Now we have. Uh, I love like old hundred demons or like Grimlock stuff. Those stuff so hard to find too. Grimlock. I've yeah, like never Grimlock, seen an OG Grimlock shirt. I've only ever seen one person with a Grimlock T-shirt that I can. Yeah, think dude, of. I've been listening to Grimlock forever, like twenty years, and I've never seen somebody with a Grimlock shirt. I've seen, like even when I've they seen were around, with like the FBL shirt or BFL shirt, it has like a little like NFL rip that here. This is BFL. It's super oh, yeah, sick. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. dope. I know what you're talking yeah. about. But those uh, probably are a few hundred at least if you can find them. Definitely super rare. What yeah. about- OG Crush stuff would be sick. What about as far as what you've sold? What is the most expensive T-shirt that you've sold, or some of them? Hmm. I sold a Nirvana heart-shaped box, which is like the all-over print one, where it just says Nirvana has like the heart here. I sold that one for I think twenty-two hundred. Oh, nice. That the all-over most... print. Yeah, that was the most expensive one I sold. I sold a one of 12 maximum penalty jersey on the champion blank for 1200 which is kind of ridiculous that was like kind of like a fluke sale it was like two yeah, people I like going back and forth who really wanted it damn. yeah there's two people like big collectors that were like bugging me for it and like they got into like a bidding war in the dms so, like i didn't want to sell it. i bought it for myself and they went crazy for it like fuck it <laughs> like yeah some like swedish collector listed it on ebay for like 80 bucks and i was like bought it instantly and they both bugged me for it for like over a year until Holy i sold it to one of them yeah it's nice when you can find them little uh things that flew under the radar i've had plenty of yeah. records on ebay that i've done that with where i'm like oh somebody's gonna totally outbid me on this and then it just doesn't get bid on or you catch it for super cheap or the bid ends at like mm-hmm. you know it'll be a monday like when everybody's at work or something and they mm-hmm. forget about it or they list it as, like, a weird title. Because the way eBay works, the first, like, five words are the main keywords that pop up. So if it's, yeah. like, punk band, metalcore, bulldoze, LP, then people get fucked with that. So, like, it doesn't pop up in their in their search. Yeah, right. That's what happened to me. Like, one of my, like, favorite come-ups, I got a demo air Marauder shirt on eBay for 60 bucks on auction. And the way the guy listed it was, ha, 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 I knew your metalcore band vintage Marauder t-shirt. So nobody saw it. Right. And it's like, got it for $60. And if I didn't, or if they listed it normally, it probably would have went for like $600 or some stupid amount. Yeah, people would have yeah. bid the, all over it. Yeah. Or they would have completely missed it. You never know, man. I've been on like, both never sides know. of that. I have I only have like a few shirts. I have a really old typo negative blue grape lo- company shirt. Um, oh, hell yeah. I know that's... Do you know what graphic, which one it is? I'm trying to think of the it'll come to me randomly but it's uh pretty green I can tell you that but that ain't gonna help you because most of their shirts are <laughs> I was gonna say all of them are green yeah. with like an orange font or something I gotta for some reason I'm blanking on what the fuck it says on the back but something probably about, like a $200 shirt at least it is, it is a blue it's grape typo 350 the last time I looked at it oh hell yeah and then I have an old Nevermore shirt that was from the original oh, tour that um, that goes for quite a bit too. But I don't ever plan on selling them. I mean, I like yeah. them. I wear them. So Definitely. unfortunately, them, they're XLs, and I typically wear a large, so I don't wear them that often. But could get them hemmed on the sides. Could. I see people do that all the time with vintage stuff. Now that I know that you can do that, I never thought about that shit. Like to me, I'm like, I that's that's for suits and stuff. You, you know, know that like, vest, yeah, exactly. shirt. that that cold as life vest I wear in the winter. I got that um, brought in on the sides by a Polish lady out on Long Rapids Road. Oh, that's right. You told me about that with your one jacket. Yeah, yeah. she'll bring them in, and it was like super cheap. I'll let you know after the program. Nice. <laughs> so. We were talking a little bit about hard lore before we started here. How did you mm-hmm. get involved in sponsoring that? So I was just casually listening to it, and I've been trying to figure out more ways just to get my name out there, just in different avenues that other people like me aren't doing. So right. try to expand a little bit. I think I just hit a bow on an Instagram. I was just like, hey, what do I do to sponsor hard lore? And just went from there. Nice. Because I think they're – They've seemed to, from what I've seen in pictures, both be t-shirt collectors as well. 
Yeah, that's another reason why, though, because it kind of goes with the show. It's not, like, out of the blue. Like, they aren't into the, themselves. Like, there's shirts that I've sold to Colin that he had, like, 10 years ago. He's like, dude, I regret selling this 1992 DSI shirt. Thank you for finding it. Like, I haven't had it this in 10 years. So they're oh, definitely both big collectors. Up. Yeah, I noticed yeah, the, Bo is, like, a big Metallica T-shirt guy, obviously. Yeah, Colin has an insane, like, typo collection. He probably has, like, $5,000 in typo shirts. <laughs> Damn. I don't know if it's ex- I don't know if it's exactly that, but I know but he yeah, has yeah, like yeah. every single one. Got and every single type is at man. least two hundred. Definitely. I mean, he got them all when they were like thirty bucks on Depop or Depop or eBay. Like he's had them like for like years and years. Right. Got in when he was saying was before. It, he was saying before Peter died, just like nobody wanted OG typo stuff, and then Peter died, just slowly went up. I'm surprised it slowly went up. Like, that seems like something to me that would be, like, overnight. It's just fucking bizarre. Because, I like, for records, yeah. like, I remember when MF Doom died. Some of the stuff that was, like, let's say 30 to $40 the day before, mm-hmm. by the time that was announced, I was watching eBay just out of curiosity because I had a bunch of duplicates and stuff. And I, was, I had, like, a 7-inch box set, tape box set, all this stuff that I was getting for super cheap years before that. And people are selling these for, like, four or $500. Like, I sold five MF Doom cassette tapes for 500 bucks, And I was like, Fuck, these are cassette tapes. Are you serious? Like, <laughs> I never That's expected crazy. that that would happen. I mean, it was a box set. It was the Special Herbs box set. But still, like, I think I paid 30 or 40 bucks for it when I bought it. I just never thought that tapes that would shit be up happened there too. with Prince too. He died overnight, and it yeah. was like, and people were going for it. Prince, I could see though, because he was like a worldwide well, sure. icon. I mean, not that MF Doom wasn't, but now he's so much more popular. Yeah, like, it'll come, it'll adjust itself a little there's bit. There's people after. like, you know, junior high kids and high school kids that come into the record store that are looking for MF Doom, and I'm like damn, like, you guys are catching on finally, like, fucking awesome, but it's just sad that he had to die for that to happen. So yeah, I, I noticed, that happens with everybody. I noticed you have a minor threat back there. I mentioned it earlier, so let's, uh, let's, let's talk about the records you have back there, man. Yeah, that's just, so all those are just, like, ones I have in front. Like, if I take those down, they're just normal records. So then, so I got into, like, record collecting at one. I got into T-shirts, and it just kind of, like, being a completionist, it went out of hand. Just oh, trying to yeah. get everything, first press everything. And I was just like, all right, I got to stop doing this. So now I just try to collect records I can get signed by bands because, I mean, makes it more personal and more of like a collector standpoint. Plus, just kind trying of, to, it's just cool to me. first presses of certain things, you will drive yourself insane. Oh, it's ridiculous. I was like looking for like the negative approach seven inch first press <laughs> for like two, yeah. two years. And oh, I was like, God. all right, fuck this. I was like, all right, fuck this. Like, I don't want to pay six hundred dollars for a record that, like, yeah. I can spin the repress of it. And I was it's gonna, gonna say, sound the same. yeah, dude, it's, it's like it probably sounds better. Exactly. It's just like, it's not really worth it. Sometimes, I have a in my friend opinion. that owns a store in Kalamazoo, and he had a second pressing of the Linda Blair seven inch, and I think that sold for like seven fifty or something like that. Jeez, and that was man. just a couple months ago. Crazy. It is wild, like, for a 7-inch, too. Like, But honestly, though, the most valuable records that I've seen usually are 45s because they're, like, one-off singles. That Probably are, more like, rare and whatnot. Yeah, and it's a like lot it's of easier to, like, didn't beat up 7-inches, too. To beat them up? Like, I feel like, yeah, I feel like they're, like, wor- almost worse quality. It's, like, no, for some reason, I feel like... they're more durable, but the issue really? with huh. it is they were used... People treated them, like... Exactly. Shit. People used and yeah. abused them so badly, and a lot of times they were being used for sampling or DJing or shit like that, or in a jukebox that had a poor quality needle. The 45 cuts usually a little hotter, too. Yeah, so you see them just, beat up. Just so you know. But they're actually more durable, I, I, like, honestly. Huh. You wouldn't think, but they are. Yeah, I mean, I feel like whenever I've had, like, 45s, I feel like I always, like, fuck them up more than my record somehow. I mean, it also depends on how it was made. I've seen some really cheaply yeah. made ones, but for the most part, like, say, we'll take Motown because they were a huge company for 45s. Like, a lot of those, if you put it up against, like, a RCA orange label Dynaflex record, like, it is a night and day difference because that Dynaflex record will flap around like it's nothing, where the 45s, like, rigid and solid. 
Yeah. 45s. You a record store, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I cut you off. Keep going. Keep going. 45s. You're good. Is like, that's like, as far as, uh, I don't like using the word audiophile, but like in that sense of things, that's like the true way to listen to records because that's how you get the best sound out of them. Okay. In some cases, I would say. I've heard that go back and forth both ways, but um, what were you going to ask about the record store? I was going to ask, what are some of like, the best records you've had in the store? Oh, I don't know. We're, we're not in an area that we get like a lot of really cool punk and hardcore things because there wasn't yeah. that scene here, but we have Do you had, get any like, like, walk-in collections and stuff? Oh, yeah, all the time. That but whole train say... blue note was fucking... Um was pretty fucking gnarly that old stereo press that the uh, 80s one that the radio dude bought oh yeah 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 there was that um we've come across like okay so as far as jazz like there's a group called teddy edwards quartet that was out in the 60s we have hundreds and hundreds of dollar records that are just tossed around wherever like bargain bin type of stuff Mm-hmm. And I pulled this record out one time, and it was on Contemporary Records, which is a pretty well-known jazz label. But this had only been done once in, like, 1964 or three somewhere around there. It's been sitting in our dollar bin for years, and it's a $450 record. And oh, like, shit. <laughs> yeah, so, like, we pulled it out, and then I think we ended up selling it for, like, 3 350 The guy kind of bargained with us on it, but... I mean, on like seen, your wall or whatnot, like a high end record, someone walked in and bought it. Yeah, like we'll have stuff. We have a wall in the store where there's high end stuff um, and a couple shelves. And then sometimes we'll just put things behind the counter that we're like, they're for sale, but we're not trying to like push them because I'm like, I yeah. kind of want to keep this. But if somebody's going to give me, you know, X amount of dollars for it, then I'll Yeah, let you it put go. the I don't want to sell price on it. And then yeah. somebody's like, I'll That's take what I it. I do with some stuff on the website. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to. Like, there's always a there's a walking away price for sure on every item. Everything but, out of price. Yeah. But whether or not that price is going to be reasonable for you might be, you know, uh, fucking debatable. Totally. We've had original, like, Lords of Acid come in in, like, a group of grandma records, like, in between Uh Rod Stewart and Neil Diamond and shit like that. Um, Trying to think off the top of my head. I mean, we've had some cool shit as far as original pressings go, but we just don't see a lot of punk and hardcore, really, is the main thing. But we've seen original Nirvana's and, you know, things like that. I was at a flea market going through, not flea market, a garage sale going through just like a random bin. And it was like so, Sonny and Chair Records. And then there was a Stooges test press in the bin oh, that I got from the guy. God. Damn. I, I sold it for way too cheap. I was like 14 years old when I found it. So I think I sold it for like $300. But I just remember that, that was so like sticking crazy. out to me. Sonny and like Chair and then a test and press. Shit. A yeah, fucking it was test Stooges press. test press. Damn. I sold it to a record store by me back in New Jersey a while ago. I'm so, sure he sold it for way more. I have no idea what that's even worth. But Yeah, I would, sometimes when you let things go cheap, you're like, I don't even want to see what it's worth now. Because you're like, if exactly. I want to sell it I, I, just, I just brought it to the guy. I'm just like, I don't fucking know what it's worth, whatever. I think yeah. he gave me like 300 store credit or some, something, whatever it was. So aside from your t-shirt um, stuff, you said like you're uh, going to school. What are you... Uh going to school for is it are you going in like to a career or no i'm just going for a business administration so that's what i'm uh, majoring in yeah Yeah, just as something to have just as like a backup and just to get the degree i mean no one can take it away from me if i don't use it so just something to like just something to have how long have you had the record store for um i've been here for a little over three years but the record store itself has been here for five this year Dope. And like my friend, well, it's actually Jeremy knew him before I did. And I just started like hanging out here and selling stuff out of here. And like, I'm a pretty uh, meticulous as far as organization and things go. So I started like organizing 45s, all the records, suggesting this, that, and the other. And then I was bringing in a bunch of people who were, you know, buying stuff. And then it just kind of became a partnership after that. And then I started doing all, like, the new ordering, and I handle record store day and, you know, all the social media and everything like that. And then Steve, my partner, he handles most of, like, the used side of things. Oh, yeah. And we do, like, vintage toys and stuff, too, but I feel like we've depleted most of the good toy collections out of here. 
Yeah, there's some sick Godzilla stuff up here, but it's like kind of goes with the whole like it's easier to sell 20 little Godzillas than a thousand dollar fucking big Godzilla, you know? We did sell a few. Do you mean they do like steel toys? That's pretty cool. No, we'll do anything. Like, as long as it's cool and old. Like, I mean, it could be Garfield, it could be like. You know, Beetle Bailey, like, I don't know, you know, shit, it could be whatever. Like, as long as it's cool and old, it doesn't have to be musical per se, but mm-hmm. if there's a collectible market to it, toy wise, we'll do it. But that's Steve. I don't yeah, really, I don't know, really know fuck all about toys either. He's good with that I have stuff. No idea. <laughs> I don't know that stuff. But like, I see that look stuff all it. the time. I just yeah. never know anything about it. That's a whole nother side to things. Like, it's like t shirts. Like, you know, there's certain mm-hmm. brands that are people are seeking out like they want a t-shirt yeah. on this brand or done by they you know, want this a blue company. grape tag instead of something else or something yeah, yeah. all the the it's tag like thing is toys. crazy to me how like that all pops off like that like dude wrong tag it's the same shirt nope wrong tag yep like holy yeah, it's crazy. fuck dude you guys are nuts you know and it could be like a 500 dollar difference in a t-shirt yeah dude too. over the tag but Definitely. shit man you got to get those tags, dude. Make that money. Got to got to tell if it's an original by the tag and whatnot. Craziness. So you said you've been doing this about five years, if I remember right earlier, yeah? Yeah. When did you really notice that, like, the price of things was really taking off? Was it a pandemic thing or was it happening beforehand? So prices definitely shot up during the pandemic. Just, like, everything across the board shot up definitely during the pandemic and it kind of went down a little bit and now it's kind of at like a say like a middle point between where it was during the during the pandemic but it's just like just so many people have gotten into it it just being like generic vintage not even band yeah. stuff it's just vintage clothing is just like the most popular it's just like ever been just like secondhand apparel just across the board I've, I've noticed that like we were talking like old like 2000 era Nike dude, like windbreakers are suits. like five hundred dollars. Yeah, Jinkos, like dude. Jinko? Oh my Which god, is ridiculous. I'm embarrassed to say I used to wear them, and now they're like, it's like holy shit. But you can buy even empires even corn that shirts are, like are the same, big now. Same thing as Jinkos, almost. They just yeah. have a little bit. What shirts were you saying? Not as big of pockets. Corn like shirts. corn and limp biscuit oh, shirts. Oh yeah, like, yeah, I'd sell yeah, those for, for sure. Like 40, 50 bucks two, three years ago, and now some of those are like two hundred dollar shirts now. Insane. Which is it's like so crazy. But I feel like Limp Biscuit's been gone enough to where he's cool again. Yeah. And Same with Jinko, probably. They were in a brand, and then they no, started popping off again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I'm saying he's cool. I gotta... I'm saying he's been gone for enough time for people to that like weren't around during that to yeah, appreciate yeah, right, it right. now. To in be a different like, oh, light, cool. for sure, for yeah. sure. Have you ever seen um, the Blood for Blood Fuck Fred Durst t-shirt? No. When was that made? Um, shit, man. Probably twenty years ago. But Rob, shit. yeah, Rob made a run of them, like kind of at the height of that shit. And uh, still... it's just a straight yeah, up one of those. like blood for blood. It's got the skull, and then on the back in white letters, "Fuck Fred Durst." And he like sold. Yeah. He did an inter just an interview with him talking about it, where he's like, "I sold more of that fucking t shirt than any other blood for blood t shirt." I can see that. Shit. Just based and he's like, the... I need to fucking thank him, man. Like, you know. <laughs> but um, if you could get your hands on one of those, I bet that would sell pretty fucking good. I know Probably, one yeah. person that has one. I've actually never seen that either. Yeah. But you were about to say, like, brands. Like, Jinko was one of them. Um, I've even Jinko, noticed... South Pole, all South that shit. Pole, really? I didn't think about that. Yeah, like... S- South Pole shit because they stopped making uh, that shit after a while right like they don't yeah produce it i anymore. think so the like ocean pacific under. is that still one i, I feel like ocean pacific is more like surfwear kind of i feel like that's like was probably popular like five ish years ago now it's kind of more like the y2k kind of style like affliction sells now which is oh, ridiculous god yeah tap out like tap, tap out, out. Oh, like 35 dollars easy but i couldn't i like Shit, like I would throw away that, like I wouldn't want near yeah, me. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't sell, but now it's like, it's like what the kids want. It's crazy. It's, yeah, those kids, man. Those kids are crazy. I guess everybody has their own style. No, like, for sure. Polo is another one that I was gonna say, like the the old like multicolor panel hats and stuff that they had. Mm-hmm. I've seen some of those go for a wild amount. Yeah. I've seen o- the, OG the, Polo, OG Tommy, like that shit's really expensive. Yeah. Like, the good pieces, like the South Beach jackets and stuff. 
I have this big puffy Tommy Hilfiger jacket. I don't know when it was made. It's got to be late 90s, early 2000s, but it's reversible. Like it's kind of like a blue varsity jacket on one side, and when you turn it inside out, it's brown. But it's it's old Tommy Hilfiger shit. I wonder if that's worth anything. I don't. I hardly ever wear it because it's like a puffer jacket, and I don't really like how. I'm like, not puffy a puffer. It is. Yeah, I'm not like I'm a, a fucking puffer. Yo. I don't want to be the Stay Puff Marshmallow guy walking around like. Yeah, fucking, dude, like, get zapped by Vankman and shit. <laughs> yeah, Ernie Hudson be chasing you. Um. So you said you wanted to start doing some more festivals and stuff where you set up like. I, yeah. I know there's like vintage just trade expos basically that's yeah up. those like, i always do like thrift cons like the biggest secondhand yeah. vintage market like they go like just city to city i've done all of those ones this year but i definitely want to just sell at more like hardcore shows mainly just because like somebody there is watching hardcore they know who i am so yeah exactly. uh, just be just be cool to put the name to the face to some of those people you know definitely plus if you're heavily stocked on like hardcore and punk rock style t-shirts like you know for a fact there's going to be collectors there definitely i mean somebody's going to want a 90s biohazard or 2008 ty shirt yeah. or some shit have you set up at any festivals as far as hardcore goes no, I currently haven't or no so, uh i've sold a, i've sold a, like local shows in like tom's river new jersey like local hardcore shows and like nothing like big like this is hardcore or anything like that but like I said earlier, I'm trying to hit up Bob that uh, see if I can set it up at FYI that, uh, this year because I was supposed to last year but just didn't. So I think tied down would be a, tied down would be a good one for you too. Yeah, I thought about tied down too, but I went to tied down this year. I just like didn't have the resources to bring with me like a rack and table and all that bullshit. Yeah. So I just flew just like the, the, I just like made the decision like the day before. I was like, oh shit, let's go to tied down. Damn, dude, I missed there. you. I was there, but I didn't see you. Yeah, I looked for you, but like I don't think I remembered or like knew what you looked like. So I was like, could have ah. been. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you're like, oh, I'm the dude in camo shorts. And you're like, oh, okay, <laughs> that really fucking oh, man. I, did, I, I didn't do that. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm in I'm in camo cargo camo cargo shorts, a striped t-shirt, and a snapback. Every other person <laughs> yep. there. Good luck. I got a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, no, so, but anyway, yeah, dude. So. You also said you were um, you're up in Jersey and you moved down to the Carolinas. Um, yeah, Charleston. Was that for school? Uh, my like entire family was moving here, so I just like oh, said right and moved right with, and then went to school here. Just I was just wondering, just because uh, like we were talking earlier, and you were in Jersey, and hardcore shows were five minutes away, and now you're you're out in the yeah. boonies like the rest of us. Yeah, right when I moved, the shows at Salty's Beach Bar in New Jersey, which yeah. was 12 minutes from my house, started popping off. So now it's just like all that war and morticians playing there on a Tuesday, oh, demise dude. and fucking everybody gets hurts playing there on a Wednesday. I'm just like, fuck, 12 yeah. minutes from my house. Yeah, All the good shows start going again. We've, never, we've never gotten to enjoy that luxury. Yeah. Yeah. New Jersey was great. Hour from Philly, hour to New York, 30 minutes to Asbury, literally a show any day of the week. Yeah, you're kind of like at a main like focal point in between like all the you know, major yeah. areas that are hosting that uh, stuff. Yeah, I could go to Brooklyn Monarch on a Saturday, then go to First Unitarian Church on a Sunday. So nice. Sick, <laughs> dude. Yeah, we've had a severe lack of shows up here for quite a while now just because of how far north we are like there's yeah not really any reason to come up here if you're not going to the up or canada or something so it's hard how to... far are you from canada um how, how i don't even soon know. can you get to canada from here like you can get to canada and what well we're four five and a half hours five from Detroit, hours so maybe? like five five and oh, a half so, so so far not like 30 minutes away no, no. fuck no because if yeah. we went north it would it would take longer to go north than it would go south i think to get to the boat yeah. well maybe not it depends on how you're traveling yeah, I, i'm just thinking boat. yeah we're going 23 then we're going boat but then you could take 75 yeah, there's a million different ways hey, if you had a boat you could hit canada pretty quick from here like you just cut across lake huron and you're there not that it's a small lake but you'll get there quicker than driving i would imagine the last time i was in canada was like 18 years ago and um and i went the northern way and i couldn't even remember how long it took 
Yeah, I've never even, I've crossed to Windsor one time, like across the Ambassador, and then pretty much turned right around because I wasn't supposed to be going over there. But I've never actually, like, gone and hung out in Canada. Yeah, the whole 9-11 kind of fucked it all up. That, and I just, <laughs> I mean, what the fuck am I going to do in Canada that I can't do here, really? <laughs> like, I mean, there's not, like, a whole lot of difference. Oh, there, back then there was a difference, but, but we'll talk could, about that off camera. Age, yeah, I, I no, get no, that. it wasn't even that. It wasn't even that. <laughs> oh, I yeah, we'll you, got it, you yeah. got it, you got it, you got it. I got you. So anyway, yeah, dude. So what are like as far as music goes? What's some of the stuff that you're into? You seem to be pretty into hardcore type of things. Yeah, what are some mainly of your hardcore. Main bands? Shit, like what I'm listening to like right now, a lot of yeah. Mm-hmm. I haven't listened to, like, I haven't even really been listening to a lot of hardcore, honestly. I've been listening to, like, The Carpenters. Those are the answers and the we Sundays. wanted anyways. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of Title Fight and Super Heaven, honestly. Title been Fight's really dope. Into really into that. Uh, what else? I don't know. What's, what's my most recent Spotify listen? I've been listening to a lot of Warning and uh, 40 Watt Sun. 40 Watt, 40 Watt Sun, Watt Sun. Yeah. yeah. Uh... Yeah, nothing too crazy. Listen to yeah, a lot of the Sundays, Jesus and Mary Chain. But listen to a lot of that shit. Oh, I, I just cool. get like burnt out when I just like only listen to fucking like no, you, Hate Breed and Marauder yeah, every day. You gotta mix Speaking it up, of the man. choir, man. Yeah. We're gotta we're all about it mixing it up. Like we are into pretty much everything except polka and mariachi music. Yeah. What about you guys? Have you been listening polka, to anything yeah. new recently? Yeah, I'm like, but basically, I'm on like. uh listening to all these seven inches so like wreckage's new seven inch is really fucking mm. good it's like a hardcore band self and hell yeah. bayway out of jersey been listening to a lot lately they've blown then, up since i moved it's yeah, kind of crazy dude, i think they yeah. played over like everybody gets hurt or something at salty's which fucking is crazy to sick. me and then of course um the bands that we've interviewed lately like some days are darker um you know then what like nas just repressed um, it was written, so that's kind of been spinning. Yeah, I mean, we're all over the, the new place. Stuff goes, yeah, I've been there was a there's a band called Neon Nightmare that just released a song that is very much like typo negative. Um, okay, that is fucking awesome. I don't know like who's in the band yet or whatever, and if for some reason, some way they're listening to us, hit us up because I would love to interview that band. But nobody knows who the hell they are yet because they only put out one single so far, and it was like a couple days ago. Um, What's it called again? Neon Nightmare. Neon Nightmare? I'm going to check that out. It's on 20 bucks spin label. Um, I can't remember what the name of the song was. It has Lost in the Yeah, title. Laceration. That's on 20 bucks spin. They're like death oh, yeah, metal that band. Death metal band, yeah. I've been jamming those dudes. Well, the, actually, I kind of... I was jamming them a lot more last week, but... Yeah. The new Benny the Butcher that just came out, Summertime Butch. I've been listening to that a bunch. Um, the new Common and Pete Rock. That's and on my like list. stuff like that, you know. I'm on, I don't know, all over the place. We were li- we interviewed a Hobbit metal band recently. I was listening to that shit, um, <laughs> which, which is surprisingly sounds, sick as fuck. Yeah, it sounds like yeah. it could be cheesy. Yeah. Hobbit but metal, it's really yeah, cool. Dude. What makes it Hobbit? Because <laughs> he's like the lyrics. The lyrical are about... content's all okay. Like, yeah. So it's kind of like Viking metal, kind of, but Hobbit metal. Yeah, yeah, okay. but, but real black. I guess it'd be cooler if he was a midget doing it. Like <laughs> that like, would be fucked up. Dressed up and everything. Actual habit. Yeah, big That'd ass feet. Oh, <laughs> no, we're always creepy. like looking for new music, not just to interview, but just kind of to yeah. like reignite that feeling of like, oh my god, this band is amazing. Like I'm always looking for that. So I'm just I'm always think, what was shopping that band? every genre. Yeah. Skinhead, who played this is hardcore, they blew me away. They were sick. I never, I never like listened, I never listened to them or like saw them live. But my buddy Vic is in that band, and I was like talking. I was like, "Oh shit, you guys are playing, right?" And they blew me away. So I've been listening to that record that came out last year by them. At Tide Down, did you see? Do you remember seeing Trail of Lies? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, before the album they put out before that, I did they play the pre-show or they play the actual fest? They played the actual fest. Okay. And um, their other album was good. I liked it, but this new one is so fucking... It almost honestly yeah. reminds me of a little bit of, like, Tyrant, dude. Like, it's really hard. It's fucking crazy. Weird. We, were, we were just talking it, about That's Tyrant. what I mean in t-shirts and shit, but, yeah, that 
I've been listening to that band a lot too, and it's uh, that's pretty in your face and shit. It got like a lot harder. The contention is another yeah, one contention. behind you. Yeah. Basically, dude, you know how it is. If it's on days, if it's on like Triple B, the shit's like so good. Top mm-hmm. floor tape. Shout out to Jimmy. Anything on there? Dead Hang, Vigilante, all those bands. Sorry, I'm forgetting like a million the of new, them. Uh, the new Nails EP. We were just talking <laughs> we about just, that too before yeah. you got on. No, we not yet. I gotta. You like it? It's sick. Yeah, I think it was really. I'm good. I'm gonna have to add it to my list to check out. The, I don't think it's any of like the original members other than the singer, but it's sick. I think I'm excited the, to see them on the tour they're going on. The right new on. album comes out next. What's the date today? It's next week. Yeah, I, I think believe. it comes out soon. It's yeah. the 23rd. I'm pretty sure. Oh, Uno I, Lady I from down up front. Wax Maid. Shout out to her. I got um a couple 45s from her in the mail, oh, and yeah. one of them was an actual Wax Mage, which is kind of why I I got it and um. Super interesting music. Hopefully, we'll have her on. She's like hauntingly. I, I don't know, dude. She's so a, crazy what she does with her voice. Yeah. It's hard to describe. You have She's to hear a it. one one woman band. It's really cool. But only vocal. Hardcore? Or what type of like music is no, it? It's, no, it's. I is, don't. It's like orchestral. I think they call it mostly fucking weird. I don't know. I think dude. they just call it alternative because like, it's hard to. It's all like acapella, define, but. but yeah, that's sick. But she's, she's like a oh, ghost, and it's all ghostly layered. choir, I think, is what they call it. There you go. Yeah, her, that's how um, she describes Instagram it. Instagram says, but yeah, it's yeah. it's nothing like hardcore or anything like that. Like I said, like we get into everything. I mean, I've been on a Simon and Garfunkel kick lately for the last like, yeah. few days too. So yeah, I've like only listened to the Carpenters the past like week. <laughs> yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty hardcore too. That yeah, answers as fuck. That pretty much answers our usual end of episode yeah, question. Like what some we always ask, what is something you'd listen to that people wouldn't expect? And you're wearing a pain of truth hat and a hate breed t shirt and we're talking about <laughs> the carpenters. The carpenters yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Perfect. Love the carpenters. <laughs> Who doesn't, man? The end of the world, bro. Come on. That shit's hard. Rainy days and Mondays. I'm always exactly. it. 80 synth pop is another big thing for me that I'm always listening to that I really like. Yeah. What type of bands? Like, like Ter- Duran Duran? Duran, 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 Duran Tears for Fears. Uh, Tears for Fears is dope. Pet Shop Boys, The Human League, all that stuff. Um, I love is there Erasure that like that type of music too? Um, a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Kind of more on the Echo and the Bunny Man side of things. Yeah, I like that. Like, I love yeah. that shit. Slightly more gothic. Yeah. Yeah, like the replacements and shit. Love them. Love them. We did a Except we did a I, whole podcast episode yeah. on that way back in the day. That was our third just ep- the third episode. Like third music. episode. Just about the replacements. The, yeah, the third oh, episode shit, that we ever that. did. Please oh, don't. Yeah, it's horrible. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> that was like. But we it's had fun, just you know. Started, but yeah, I mean, it's fun. But I'm sure if I went back and listened to it, I'd be like, oh my god. No, I'm just, not going to do it. You, you feel started. free, sir, and you can let us know what you think. But yeah, you go on it. I'll give, I'll give you feedback on I'm it. I'm sure it's cringe, I was dude. still fucking with the audio and getting everything right. I probably got a bunch of How long of have you been doing clicks. the pop for? Um, two years? A little over two years now. Oh, hell yeah. So you, this is episode 106, I think, or 105 oh, maybe. I'm, trying, I'm pretty sure it's 106. Dope. But yeah, I mean, we didn't really. Um, We've been audio up until the hundredth episode. Yeah. And now we're. No, we did. Oh, so you just started doing that. the cameras and stuff. Yep. yep. Oh, sick. Kind of crossed we that, shit, like that mine, threshold. Hopefully, mine isn't too bad. I know it's a little grainy. Oh, you look fine, but... dude. Nah, you're fine. We've had worse. The lighting's a little. Yeah. yeah. It's hard... <laughs> Overhead lighting's hard to like get any. It's hard to fix. Like, there's nothing you yeah. can really do about it. Yeah, you're gonna get that glare either way. Yeah. Um, but one thing I wanted to ask, like, before we wrap shit up here, because uh, I keep staring out all, all your records back there. What's one of the most prized autographed possessions that you have back there? Because I can't see what's what. Probably my record signed by Eddie, honestly. Like, those mean a lot to me because I got them signed when he played at This Is Hardcore, I think, two years ago. So I have all nice. my leeway records signed by him. Awesome. And uh, probably like my Fugazi or Minor Threat stuff because I have like all I have all the Minor Threat records signed by the entire band, so those are super sick to me. That is everybody. I, that I, is I, super I, sick. Yeah, I had to drive to Ian's house to get him to sign them because I got everybody else <laughs> oh, before shit. him. You just go bang yeah. on his door and shit. 
No, I was emailing him back and forth for a couple of months, oh, and then he's right like, "I don't want you to, I don't want you to drive six hours to get me to like write my name." So I eventually was driving past there, driving to South Carolina, so then stopped there and had him sign them. That's sick, dude. So sick. Like, I don't want you to drive, but if you're in the neighborhood, fuck it. Exactly. Yeah. That That's is really awesome. cool. His autograph's so funny. He doesn't even sign. He all of the ones he signed, he just writes, "Hi, Luke. Hello, Luke." How are you doing, Luke? <laughs> like, they're, they're so funny. But that's they, what's they, cool because they're so personal, yeah. you know. Exactly. Like those, I'll never. Like I'll never Fuck sell no, those. Dude. Like, Ever. Those are so fucking sick. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. I mean, that's uh, that's what I love about the about hardcore man is everybody's just fucking mm -hmm. normal and down to earth for the most part. Just and if they're people, not, man. they're fucking assholes. Well, I mean, he's yeah. like a literal superstar within his genre yeah, but he's still sure. like a down to earth real cool level headed guy like he never let that yeah. go to his head can you still get out of step and they pay the postage hmm. I don't even know probably cause I know they I mean I wonder if they I'm gonna look into that cause they, they used to suck now cause postage and they said, keeps going that's up. what I mean and they, they uh I remember media he, mail's like five dollars yeah now. here in an Each, interview if where a he record was like, is we lost over, so much money, but we never changed it. Yeah. If a record's over one pound, it's 538 right now. Yeah, it's probably like for under one pound, it's like 486 or Fucking something like that. Uncle something Sam, like that. dude. Uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, two keep, years ago, or a couple of years ago, it was 319 I know. for under a pound. I was just bitching about that the other day. Yeah. Because I keep having to, like on Discogs and eBay, I keep having to raise the shipping rates up because I always try to go mm -hmm. like a dollar over what it actually costs to pad for like using record mailers as well because i gotta buy those in bulk to get them and they're usually like yeah. at least a dollar a piece even if you're buying a couple hundred of them so the shit adds up i mean you can write it gotcha. off but like it helps to get that extra dollar back but every mm -hmm. time they raise it i'm like fuck now i gotta up this to six dollars extra $7. 20 cents every and, yeah, yeah. It's and annoying. when you're selling 10 or something, it's like, oh, there's $2. I mean, could have yeah. saved that. It just all adds up. Yeah, like on record store day, like after that, I'll put everything online, and it's a fucking bidding frenzy for like three days, and it just goes yeah, nuts. Yeah, that shit is by like the fucking end of, piranhas, dude. By the yeah. end of Does record store go days, crazy by you at record store day? Oh, yeah. I mean, like we're a not huge a, and stuff? Huge for us, because we're not a big city. Mm -hmm. Like, we have, I think our population's like maybe... It's like 30,000 in the whole county, so maybe like 10 to 12 in the Alpina city. I want to say is like 10 to 12,000. Yeah. So when I first started it, I had a lineup of like six people. Um, and I was like, oh, cool. You know, I didn't know what to expect. I mean, I'm getting the word out. It's the first time that it's ever been done here. So I'm just trying to get yeah. people more informed. I had like 40, 50 records and I, it sold out in immediately like it was 10 minutes and done yeah it was real it, it was that the so, one where everybody just was yeah. yeah people were grabbing stuff off the yeah, shelf it was like, all, like from they didn't even know, didn't know what they were, what we were doing like some girl ended up with a record she didn't even want just bought it just because and i'm like fuck there's like, like people grabbing from like over a shelf and yeah. not even seeing what it is just like grabbing it there was and, shoulders that's like crazy. people elbowing yeah. each other and shit yeah. so then the next year i like revamped it and did it a different way to where it was less hectic like everybody who is in line and I've seen some other stores do this, but like we pass out numbers like Secretary of State style. Like, so, you know, we'll call you in, have you go pick out your stuff, can't buy duplicates, that sort of thing to avoid people flipping things. But now, like, I've in like two years, I've gone from six people in line to usually like 50 before oh, we. Shit. Open. I mean, that's still a lot for opening. Yeah, yeah there's sick. people that drive from all over to get here because it's like. Smaller, smaller but it keeps getting bigger every year so they're losing their shot every time <laughs> like i mean we've had people drive up from ohio and stuff and i'm like you sure. realize you passed like a hundred stores on your way here right <laughs> yeah, they're like crazy. yeah but i got uh, a probably better a chance, better chance. Yeah. yeah but it's starting to get to where they don't because just there's so many people coming from all of northeastern michigan Cause we're the only store up here that does it so like you get people yeah. from every surrounding area coming in it's the only record store up here period really yeah but i was gonna say like on ebay after i put everything out there the following day and stuff by the end of the week that week i've usually paid 400 dollars in shipping just alone Shit. like because just to how much shipping costs like it's yeah my, my shipping bill is ridiculous i probably have to spend like 
four thousand a month just alone on shipping. Oh, yeah. It's fuck. ridiculous. So Damn I'm probably it. shipping like twenty five to fifty things a day, so it fucking adds up quick. Damn, dude. Does eBay yeah. have better than not selling anything? Yeah. Hey, I can't complain. I'll, I'll be bitching while packaging stuff. That I'll like check myself. I'm like, yeah, why am I yeah. Complaining? I Don't be complain yeah. for sure, right? Yeah. yeah, I've been in those scenarios too, where you're like checking yourself. Oh, and yeah, you're dude. like, wait a minute. Oh, this yeah, is my like, business. Like I'm doing yeah, this. Exactly. Like it's an expense. Yeah. It's all part of business. You got to spend money yeah. to make money. Exactly. Does eBay have? I don't know if this is different for t-shirts. What are the fees for t-shirts on eBay? Do you know off the top of your head? I think just like used clothing alone is 12%, 12, 12 or 10. That's roughly about the same for records. I want to say records yeah. is 13 yeah, or it's 12 like 13. and a half. Might Something as well like be that. 13. Because I don't, rec- or, um, t-shirts don't count as media mail, do they? It's got to be like first class. Just first whatever. class, yeah. yeah. That's what I thought. Oh, I just I just mailed out a T-shirt and it had to be first class. Remember? Yep. Because I've so when uh, that awful new Metallica album came out, they <laughs> um they sent us a bunch of promo material like guitar picks, yeah. posters. They sent me like two big ass rolls of caution tape that had Metallica on it. And once the day was over and there was a bunch of shit left over, I just threw it all Straight online. Straight to eBay. Yeah, so I was selling the three packs of picks for like 40 bucks a piece because that's what they were going for. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I tried shipping a media mail and like two days later, they all came back to me in a big ass bundle. And I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, this is totally like constitutes media mail. But yeah. So then I had to eat all that shipping cost and then reship them out. You in didn't envelopes. get the money back for it? I tried, but the post office yeah. was being a pain about it. Yeah, they're fucking like, oh, it's your fault. You're dumbass. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was, it is what it is. It was, it ended up being like maybe like $40 shipping, which wasn't the end of the world. But still, I was like, I didn't know. Like, so, what de- yeah. media is only defined by it has to be like a CD, a cassette, an LP, it's like a video, or, or a book, or like, a yeah. book. magazine. Magaz- okay. But the paper is weird. It can't have like promotion or anything in it. So, I've sold like a. Uh, like Hit Parade or magazines okay. on eBay, and I've gotten those sent back to me for not being like qual- like qualifying for media mail. I'm like, yep. what? it's fucking paper. And it's, yeah, it's media sense. mail is like the one form of shipping that's always subject to inspection, no matter what. So they yeah. can just pull it. Like if they're like, oh, this looks semi suspicious, they can open it mm-hmm. up and look at it. Fucking but, like, ripping up your think... old Hit Paraders and shit, not treating yeah. it with respect. I don't think other forms of mail have that same legality to it like i don't think you can just tear open any first class package mm-hmm. unless it like sent off uh, you know some type like of a flag or something yeah. yeah i'm not sure i've definitely had stuff searched for like no reason where it's just like a box of t-shirts i mean it could be like maybe from like the sender like i don't really know how how that works i would imagine I though that it's like Oh, you're there it's fine print you're using our service so we're allowed to go through your shit whenever we want yeah. yeah, I've definitely got some like sketchy boxes from like Mexico or something that like looks like a fucking brick. That yeah, I've yeah, yeah. Before. <laughs> where I'm just like, where the box comes like a completely different box, where it's like they put the box that got sent in inside another box and yeah, send it to you, which is like ridiculous. Just to make it look like better. Exactly. Yeah. So like your shirts aren't falling out and shit. Right. Yeah. I had a guy one time send me. I bought one record and he sent it to me. It was an eBay seller, and when I got it, I swear it was like. The package was this wide by, like, this is, like, three feet by three feet of, like, thick styrofoam just duct taped all in a circle. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, I would never seen one that bad. <laughs> like, I've seen some people use some weird boxes, but, like, two big chunks of styrofoam and you just duct tape the ever-living shit out of it. It was so hard to get into. <laughs> like... <laughs> the package was crumbling. Like, thankfully, the record was fine. It's hilarious. But yeah. it was like when the guy brought it in, I was like, "What the hell is that? Like, that's not a record." And, like, the mail guy's like, "I don't know." Like, he was just as confused as I was. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely gotten some weird boxes. I've gotten like chip boxes, like you buy from like Walmart or something with like shirts in it. I've gotten like poster tubes with fucking shirts stuffed, stuffed into in them. it. That's cool. That's weird. Because yeah. a poster tube oftentimes costs, costs more, more to yeah. ship than it would yeah, a t-shirt exactly. bag. I've gotten like birthday bags that like people just like fold over and then tape over and throw a label <laughs> on. I've gotten some weird ones. That's crazy. The birthday bags. Funny. I have like a taped up Meyer bag or something. Yeah. I can yeah. see that too. Um, 
But all right, before we wrap things up, man, do you have anything you want to plug or get off your chest or anything like that? Uh, Instagram is Mad Vintage, M A D D underscore Vintage. Website is just madvintage.com. Nothing in between there. Uh, Which will all be in the episode description. So check it out. Follow us. Check out the site. Buy some stuff if you find what you like. Yeah, dude. Uh, hit me up on Instagram if you got any shit to sell. It could be a Pain of Truth shirt from two years ago or a fucking. 80s Meyer third shirt. I pretty much buy anything. Right so on. if you got anything to sell, hit me up on there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for having me on here. Hey man, thanks for yeah, jumping absolutely. on. Absolutely. Yeah, this is dope. A lot of fun. And on a side note, like when I sold you my stuff, it was like uh, it really helped me out at a time in need, you know. So I appreciate you for that. You that's know how I, that's how it goes a lot of the times where people is like, all right, I've had these for so long. I mean, I need a thousand dollars. Maybe they're worth fifteen hundred dollars, but you can sell them all. I mean, it might take me three months to even see that money. So I mean, sometimes like I was, I was was shocked at the time that I was like, "Holy shit, somebody's gonna pay this for my old fucking E Town T shirt." I remember you being mad excited. I still have your E Town shirt. Hell yeah, dude! I still have an E Town shirt I got from you. That's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. The one that that's like, if you're not with us, you're against us. That was that was really fresh. I took care of that one. I still have that one. It's good shit, man. Well, uh, it's nice having you on, man, and I'm glad you're doing yeah. well. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, man. It's cool good to talk see to you guys. doing well, and uh, we'll be in touch with you soon, man. We appreciate Definitely. you jumping on. I'll send you a photo of that Naughty by Nature shirt. Right later. on, dude. Peace right, out, bro. brother. Have a good one, Peace man. Peace out. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah.